So I'm Bruce Shane, and today we're taking a look at some simple reciprocating air engines. Now these pieces are fairly easy to build. They demonstrate the idea of changing a reciprocating or back and forth movement into a rotary motion. Uh, they are human powered, or in this case, they're actually lung powered. It's as simple as breathing out and breathing in. Now these pieces operate under the same principles as the more complicated machines, such as the one operated by my shop vac. Or my engine, which is hand powered. Now I do have several variations, so what I want to do is take a look at them, show you how they operate, and then I want to show you how to build them. So let's get started. Now this is our simplest one. This is made from mostly recycled materials and just requires a few hand tools to build it. Now I particularly like this one because it allows us to see what's going on. The cylinder for this one was made out of a fluorescent light tube plastic cover and it had a cap on the end which made a very nice mouthpiece. Now here's my smallest version. This piece was made from a plastic tube that had candy in it and the piston is a ball that was made out of paper and aluminum foil. Now finally here's the biggest version I have. All the pieces for this engine are made out of wood except for the cylinder which is a cut off soda bottle and the piston is made from a styrofoam ball that was sanded down to make it fit. Now let's go over the principle of its operation. When I exhale, it drives the piston forward that pushes the piston rod against the crank, driving it as far forward as it can. The inertia of the two plastic wheels continue to turn that crankshaft until it gets to the position where I inhale. Outside air then pushes the piston to the top of the cylinder where it's then ready to make another cycle. Now let's see how to build one. Our piston saw in this case is made out of a toilet paper tube, but we could also cut one out of a paper towel tube. If you look around you can find all sorts of tubes that would work for this, even small soda bottles. In fact, we can even make one out of a heavy stock piece of paper. We find a small tube that's the appropriate size, cut out a piece of paper, start rolling it, put a little bit of glue on it. And there we go. Now we continue rolling that up. And I'm going to put a couple rubber bands on there to keep it in shape until that glue dries. The piston could be some type of ball like this ping pong ball with a small arm attached that has a hole drilled at the opposite side. It could be a popsicle stick. We could even use a straw. For this motor I'm going to make a piston. Now let me get this out of the way. I'm going to start with one piece of paper and I'm going to roll it up into a small round paper ball. Get it as round as I can. I'm then going to cover it with a couple sheets of aluminum foil. Once again rolling it, trying to get it as round as I can and shape it until it fits that tube. After we're satisfied with the shape, our next step is to glue that ball onto the piston rod. Our crankshaft is going to be made out of this wire. I'm going to put a bend in it, slide the piston rod on, and then simply add the second bend. Here's our crankshaft with the piston rod on it, ready to go. The cardboard base is about 8 inches by 9 inches, but it could be larger or smaller depending on what size engine you want to make. The fold lines for the base are the width of the cylinder. And I'm simply going to put a ruler against it and then bend it up. I'll use a pointy object to put the holes in for the crankshaft. It's about an inch down and an inch in from the end. Here's our crankshaft going into place. We're simply going to slide it through those holes. 
I could use a couple pieces of tape to temporarily hold it in place. And my next step is I want to add another piece of cardboard glued to the bottom to help retain its shape. Next I want to put the cylinder wall in place. I'm going to angle the center of that tube so that it's aimed directly at the center of the crankshaft. I'll use a couple pieces of tape to hold it temporarily. Once I'm sure I have it where I want it, then I'll use hot glue and attach it permanently. My flywheels are CDs that have cardboard glued to either side, and I'm simply going to use something to poke a small hole through the center of the CDs. I'm going to start with two small pieces of cardboard in between the base and the CDs. That's going to keep them from rubbing. There we are. I'll put a CD on, move the crankshaft over just a little, and I want to bend that so that it lays flat against the CD cardboard. I'll add the second wheel, making sure that that crank is centered. And then my final step is to use hot glue and anchor that wire to the CD cardboard. When I turn the flywheel, that piston should move very smoothly up and down inside that cylinder wall. Now let's look at it from the other end, and there we can see it from this side. All right, we have it all finished. Let's give it a try. That works pretty good. 